Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I am here today with a sister that is doing things in Northwest Arkansas, someone that if you, she is tall in stature uh, <laughs> and, she, and, she, and she's, she's making things happen on a regular basis. And when you see her into a room, you have to stop and take notice. And I remember the first time that I ever saw you, Rochelle. You were at at one of the modeling events. I can't remember oh, which one. Mm-hmm. And I just said, oh, man, who's this sister? And somebody was like, oh, she played basketball or something. I, somebody <laughs> told me one thing about you. And then you connected with my wife, which was kind of cool. And I was like, man, all right. So I've heard so many great things, but I finally got the great Rochelle Bailey on <laughs> the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. You are a fellow podcaster. So yes. that, that's exciting. So welcome to I Am Northwest Arkansas. Thank you so much. I feel like a star being on, <laughs> on this podcast. I've made it in life. <laughs> right, right. Well, I'll let you be the judge at the end. You, 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 we'll ask you again if you felt like you've made it when, when all is said and done. But, but no, in all seriousness, though, really, really appreciate you coming on the podcast and kind of sharing. And for those of you that are, are listening, if you haven't heard the Interform podcast, Rochelle does an amazing job with her platform. And as I've always said, and I was sharing with this with her offline, is that, you know, people create platforms for a reason. They create mm-hmm. platforms to share ideas, to encourage, to build up others. It's one of the reasons why I created this platform. And you're doing the same thing with Inter- with the Interform podcast and how that's an extension of the Interform program mm-hmm. and how you've given a voice to, in some ways, the voiceless. Mm-hmm. And I just, I really appreciate that. And so I really wanted to have you on this podcast to share you with my audience, which I believe we there's some crossover there. Mm-hmm. But I think our audience is Northwest Arkansas. Absolutely. And so I think it's really important. So I would love for you, because this is something that we do all the time. And, <laughs> if, and I know you've listened to other episodes of this podcast, mm-hmm. but I would love for you to to share as we get started, because I want people to know who you are, just to share just a a cliff note version of your superhero origin (laughs) story. Well, I moved here in 2012 from East Tennessee, and I moved here right after my mother passed away from cancer and after a divorce. My husband at the time actually got somebody else pregnant. So I was like, hey, it is over. Um, So (laughs) so my best friend since since high school, her name is Tanisha Gist. And she has been living in Northwest Arkansas for years. And like when everything was going on, of course, I called my best friend and I'm like, I am just like, I, I'm spent. You know what I mean? Like my spirit's low. I don't know what to do. And she was like, why don't you just move here? And I was like, I don't know. I can't just like uproot my life. And she was like, you can't heal in the same place that made you sick. And that was really powerful to me. And I was like, you know what? Okay. So at the time I had my three-year-old son and a 98 Volkswagen Beetle that was a death trap. But hey, no car payments. So that was important. <laughs> and I took a bag of clothes and I just moved here. I slept on my friend's couch for months until I got a job at Dillard's and lived in a one bedroom apartment with a futon and a, 
a fat back of TV. You know, the TVs with the fat back. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that was all we had. And um, I would sleep on the futon with my son and, and eat ramen noodles. And then eventually got like two or three jobs. And, you know, we moved into a two bedroom and got some furniture. Yeah. So and then I got into radio at uh, Cumulus Broadcasting. And then I got into radio again at Star 101.5. So that's pretty much my story in a nutshell. Like, how'd you get to Arkansas? So that is how I got here. And I love it. Yeah. Well, and you came, I get, well, you came two years before I did. And you, and you came. Oh, really? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I came in 20, but my wife, Nicole, and I and our kids came in 2014, right at the beginning. So, okay. Yeah, so we've been here. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost uh yeah seven almost eight years now it's so eight it's, years. It's, it's going crazy what the so heck? i know it's insane so wow so that's so you got here was northwest arkansas what you thought it would be it wasn't i mean i expected a certain level of how should i say this misunderstanding because i grew up in the south mm-hmm. right so sure. there's certain things that comes with that and i said well Northwest Arkansas couldn't be that different than East Tennessee. And, and when you say a East lot of Tennessee, ways, were you talking like Chattanooga area? Yes. Yeah, so or, it's a tiny town called Athens, Tennessee. It's like oh, yeah. right in between Knoxville and Chattanooga. Yeah. Okay. So, and I went to college at Tennessee State in Nashville, but I thought there would be a little more resistance to me coming here, but I was actually embraced by a lot of people in the community and it was a lot of supportive feedback and I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised, obviously, because I'm still here. Right, (laughs) right. Yeah, well, I mean, and I think that's good. A lot of times you don't know what you're going to get when you move to a new area. Exactly. And so sometimes you just have to reserve judgment, Mm -hmm. which is what I tell people all the time about Northwest Arkansas. Don't knock it till you tried it. Exactly. And I am finding that people come here and they are pleasantly surprised, Mm -hmm. which is important, right? Because it's like you don't want to, you know, you know, we have preconceived notions about the coast. We know what LA is like, or at least we've seen on TV. We know what San Francisco is like. Same thing for New York, DC, Atlanta, Miami, but Northwest Arkansas. I mean, people say, oh, it's just Walmart, JB Hunt, Tyson, but basically, but there's so much more to it than that. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Yeah. So, (laughs) so now how did the radio thing come about? What really, did you always want to be in broadcast radio? I did. I mean, I didn't major in radio when I was in college. I majored in psychology. That wasn't a good idea. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did. But it's like, you can, there's that old saying that goes, you could be whatever you want to be as long as they're hiring. Right. So if they're not hiring, then you can't do it. So I'm um, actually, Anita Cowan actually approached me at Dillard's from an event. And she was like, have you ever thought about being on radio and I was like yeah I thought you had to have a degree I Mm -hmm. thought all these things and she was like we just need somebody to voice track for our Fort Smith station just you know see how it goes and I was like oh okay well I'll do it and then I fell in love with it and my mom was actually in in radio too in Las Vegas at FM 88.1 she was cookie d on the little quiet storm so I was like wow I'm following my mom's footsteps in in sort of a way and I just really enjoyed it. I liked hear it, like seeing that how you can manipulate your voice to sound excited or to sound, you know, uh, friendly. Like there's different ways you can do it. And I really just fell in love with radio after that. So, yeah. yeah. No, I love that. And so wh- do you remember listening to your mom on the radio? Yes, I do. Wow. Me and my brother used to call the radio station and request let's chill by guy (laughs) and she would be like she would play it but then she'd be like she'd call my dad and be like hey they can't be calling the radio station every (laughs) every night like once in a while that's cool funny and she would do like a special shout out it's like this goes out to uh, my baby girl rochelle and her little brother maurice and here's guy with let's chill (laughs) that was like the song that we would request so i really i really enjoyed that and i enjoyed hearing you could tell it was my mom, but at the same time, I was like, wow, she sounds different on the air. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And how powerful that was. And I really enjoyed that. Now, do you feel, and I'm, I'm curious because I know what how I feel about it, but do mm-hmm. you feel like you take on almost another persona when you get behind the mic? Absolutely. I mean, I feel like I'm a confident person anyways, but behind the mic, you you exude a certain level of confidence that's different than your everyday life. Yeah. And you just know that your voice is being heard. So there's a kind of comfort in that. Right. Because there's certain things that you want to say that you think people should hear. Yeah. And there's certain topics that you think people should talk about that they're maybe not talking about. So when you're on the air and you get to talk about those topics, 
and lead the way, it just makes you feel like a completely different person. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, I, I really do. It's I'm almost having an outer body experience hearing you <laughs> talk about this because that's how I feel, you know, mm-hmm. and it's it's ironic, you know, and our paths are actually quite similar because you I heard my grandfather on the radio growing <gasps> really? up. Yeah. And you heard your your mom. And, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, there's something about that. And, you know, I, I think a lot of times it doesn't always register with us that, oh, that might be something that you do as a child. Yeah. Right. You don't think about it. I'm sure you. When you no. were you were calling in the request, let's chill. You weren't thinking, <laughs> oh, I'm going to I'm going to do what my mom's doing exactly. in, in 15 or 20 years. But mm-hmm. I always tell people that, you know, be mindful, you know, as I even as I deal with people that are adulting and are, that are adults and that mm-hmm. are struggling with their identity because they yeah. don't know what they want to do. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times it's important for you to go back in time mm-hmm. to when you were younger to see what you know, what. What was it that you were passionate about? What, what did brought you, you like? Joy. What brought you joy? What did you get excited about? Mm-hmm. And you got excited about hearing your mom I on did. the radio. Mm-hmm. And so it mean it it just, you know, fast forward to today and here we are. And mm-hmm. you not only on the radio, but you've created a podcast. And I mean, it's just there's something about that. It gives you a sense of agency where you, you know, your voice can be heard. Exactly. And it can be spread from the rooftops without interruption because there's certain times you can have conversations with your friends yeah and there's always going to be that one friend when you talk about a situation they're like that happened to me too (laughs) and then it goes on another level and you're like okay well that that was fun right but when you're on the radio and you have your own show like you do people recognize you like everybody knows who randy is like he's a celebrity in northwest arkansas so people you have that platform and you get to share that with other people that's one thing I love about you is because it's one thing to have a platform and to be selfish with it and yeah. to say like, this is just something I want to do because I want to do it. Yep. But to give other people an opportunity and a voice, that means you're sharing your gift, you're sharing your talent, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing with it. Because it's I don't think you're given a talent just to like toot your own horn yeah. and just do whatever you want to do. I think you're given a talent so you can share it with other people and lift other people up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's so funny you say that because actually I said one of the things in 2022 that I plan to do was to be more intentional about getting more people that podcast in this area mm-hmm. on my show so I could share their platform with my listeners and vice versa. And, mm-hmm. and then more importantly, just interact with them. There's actually a number of really good podcasters in this area. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to connect with a few of them. And it's just, you know, podcasting to me is, you know, yeah, you have radio stations and you can go on the radio and do something like that. But what I tell people with a really decent digital recorder and a 60 or $70 microphone and some cables Mm -hmm. and a headset, you can almost replicate what you could do inside of a radio studio. Mm -hmm. And as we are recording this, we just happen to be in the Center for Innovation. Shout out to the Mm -hmm. Public Library. You can actually do really great work in, in an environment where you have a free place to come, a free studio to work in yeah, and to practice your craft as mm-hmm. you continue to develop that. So there's all kinds of opportunities. And that's that's one of the other reasons why Northwest Arkansas is so special to me, because mm-hmm. there are tools at your disposal that take away all of the, well, I can't do this because I can't afford to do that or I there can't afford is. to do that. Everything is free here at the library. It takes out the excuses. It takes out all the excuses. And so now you just have to have the gall and the confidence to just go ahead and do it. And as I like to say, that my common mantra is just press record. Mm, If you don't mm -hmm. do anything else, just press record Mm -hmm. and everything else will ultimately work itself out. If you're consistent with that. so Consistency. (laughs) You said a word right there. That is like my word of my life with everything, with jobs, with parenting, (laughs) dating. Got to be consistent now. Yeah. So <laughs> listen, why don't we let's talk a little bit about Interform. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know what obviously I'm assuming, you know, your involvement with Interform came before the podcast itself. Is it that did. Okay. It did. So it's I started off as a model for Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week. And then when their a position became available for communications coordinator, then I took that position. I was very fortunate to do something that I actually liked. So my involvement started off as a model and then graduated to communications because I have experience in communications. Um, And then Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week, technically we rebranded because it was Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week and Arkansas Arts and Fashion Forum, which is a mouthful. So (laughs) we combine the two because they do the same thing. 
and created a whole new word called interform. Robin created that word. And now we Robin are the Wallace Atkinson. Yes, yes. Yes. The CEO. And so now we produce Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week. And the first one since 2019 is going to be coming up pretty soon. I can't so. wait because the, yeah, la- the last one that I saw in real life, yeah. IRL for the cool kids, was uh, the, at the <laughs> hangar at Drake yeah, Field. Yeah, that was my favorite location. That was that's yeah. a nice location. Yeah. I think Jacqueline House and was in, was one of the MCs. Of course. And, yeah, because yeah. I mean, it, it's not a party unless Jacqueline's emceeing something. So. <laughs> Absolutely. But but no, you you did great. And like I said, it, my wife actually modeled on, on that show. Um, oh, yeah. Shout out to uh, Chantel Sumlin and, mm-hmm. and just so many, you know, beautiful people. I mean, they had people with disabilities that were modeling. Exactly. I mean, all you, ages, all sizes. Yeah, I was. Mm-hmm. I, that's the one thing I was really impressed <clears throat> with and and just seeing that created you created a platform for everybody you know yes. which was really nice so that's something i'm really passionate about in the modeling world because i have been told so many different things by people who are not in the modeling industry to kind of stunt my or like not propel me to go forward with modeling right mm-hmm. they're they're always like well you got to be you know this age to be a model you got to be this size to be a model you yeah. can't be a model because you're too short you can't right. be a model because you're a mom yeah and all of that is complete baloney. I almost said the other word, but <laughs> keep it PG. Right. So right. I just wanted the opportunity to the community to see themselves. Like when you watch Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week, you're not going to see random models who are a size double zero. You're going to see someone you may have seen at the grocery store. You're going to see a community leader. You'll right. see. That's what I think we should be looking at. Like, real people wearing real clothing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll see things that you won't wear to the grocery store. Sure. But I think it's important to show the talent of local creatives. There's people who know how to make dresses and pants right here in Northwest Arkansas. You don't have to go to New York to see that. And there's people who are interested in modeling that you don't have to go to New York to see that. If you can walk down the runway in just flowers, then I'm sure you can do a presentation at work or do a spreadsheet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, it's so funny because I would imagine that for what you guys do with Interform, you create, again, because of the platform that you've created, you build up and encourage people to do things that they wouldn't normally do. Correct. And I mm-hmm. think that's actually when real growth happens is when we step out of our comfort zone. Yes. And get to that place where it's not quite comfortable, comfortable but you can deal with it. And mm-hmm. then when it's all said and done, you look back and you're like, wow. I, I did had, that. I did that. Yes. Exactly. Like, yeah. I want people to have that feeling. I feel like they deserve it. I don't feel like people deserve to be excluded. And I think people know very little about the fashion industry. They know what they see. They know runway models are stick figures and they're all Caucasian. Yeah. But they don't know that there's such thing as specialty modeling where mm-hmm. you just model your hands. Yeah. There's things as commercial modeling. They need people to you know, being commercials for toothpaste, that's still considered modeling. Yeah. And you don't have to be super skinny to do that. So there's ways that you can get into the fashion industry and the modeling industry that don't include you starving yourself or being 17. Like you can be 40, you can be 50. Yeah. And I I want people to understand that because I have been told, I mean, I was told that I can model when I was younger because I was super tall and skinny. But after I had a son, it's like, well, I mean, can you really model with when you're a mom? Or yeah, you? yeah. And I'm like, yes, I can. Right, I'm definitely, right. you know, adding to my savings account. I need that. So yeah. I Don't, just want people to understand and have that that confidence and belief that they can still do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's so funny because I went to Howard. I've told people that before on the podcast. and Which Howard, is a huge deal, by the way. It, Very it, prestigious. It, 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 it's, it is a huge, <laughs> it's a huge deal for me. And I, I, I thank my lucky stars every day that I got the ability to go to Howard. But mm-hmm. uh, one of the things I was going to say was that Howard had a huge modeling scene. As a matter of mm-hmm. fact, I still have a friend. Shout out to Clayton Hunter. Uh, if you're listening, Clayton, you're probably not listening because you're in New York and you're, you're all <laughs> over the place. But Clayton is still mo- like Clayton was modeling when we were in Howard. Mm. And he did a lot of shows. I did like one or two shows because it was something Look I wanted you. to do. And, but, it, it, you know, it was one of those things where it was kind of a, more of a fad for me. But I was like, oh, everybody's doing it. So let's just do sure. it. But it was a big deal. But Clayton still models to this day for like L.L. Bean. And and mm-hmm. you know, like if, if I showed you his picture, you'd be like, oh, I've seen his picture. Wow. I've seen him. He, he, he also, Ralph Lauren took a liking to him early on. And I, I remember this because we were still in college at the time. Uh-huh. And so he started doing some print stuff for Ralph Lauren. And 
That's uh, he's awesome. still he's still doing it to this day. I mean, he's done other things, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things. Like if you start modeling at a young age, you could model for forever and a yes. day. You I can. mean, you literally can. There's so. no stop button. People yeah. always think that like, well, you're at a certain age, you got kids, you can't <laughs> model. And it's like, no, they no. need mature models as well. And the thing that I know I've noticed lately, Ro, and you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, is that I just see that they are creating more representation Absolutely. from a modeling standpoint. Right. Absolutely. I mean, well, for the last couple of years, you're seeing larger women. Mm hmm. Savage Fincy. Um, yes. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of women that w- you wouldn't have normally seen 15, 20 years ago, mm-hmm. they're modeling like crazy. And, exactly. And they're, they're, you know, it's the unapologetic, I'm going to be who I am. Yes. Take me for what you see mm-hmm. and not what you hope for. Right. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? It's a whole different ball game. I will say, I, I mean, I'm always a, a suspicious and skeptical person. I really think it's because they know that they will sell more items or move more units when they have real people who can see themselves purchasing those units. And they've seen that from Savage Fenty and from Fenty Makeup is Rihanna had created these makeup colors for women of color who normally don't see their makeup color in any other cosmetics brand. And it exploded and it is sold out and they were putting other people out of business, basically. Victoria's Secret (laughs) was shaking in their boots with Savage Fenty. So I think they they saw it more as a as a business model than being intentional about inclusion. I really don't think that they, you know, were were empathetic enough to say, hey, we need to do this. It's like we need to sell more and we need to make more money. And the only way we're going to do this is if we provide inclusion. So do we call it a happy accident? I think we do. It's a happy accident. It's like, uh, you it's know. Like, yeah, that wasn't really the intended <laughs> no. effect. I know that Walmart lately has really embraced the African-American culture in a lot of the Absolutely. products that they're putting out. And I'm, I'm hearing little by little, I hear story after story of, mm-hmm. you know, this different vendor or that different vendor that now has very prominent placement on the shelves at Walmart. Yeah. It's huge. And even during the pandemic, we've seen that. Mm-hmm. So shout I, out to Walmart for yes, giving me the, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the I, workout I, equipment. Well, I appreciate listen, that. <laughs> I, I always give a shout out to Walmart because I'm a big believer of really not trying to bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah. I mean, they don't feed me personally because I don't work for Walmart, but right. Walmart is a big part of you know, they cast a huge shadow, For a positive sure. shadow here in Northwest Arkansas. And I'm always mm-hmm. trying to explain to people because people here, it's like, oh, it's Walmart. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand till you come here. Like I didn't, I couldn't appreciate a really nice Walmart until I came here. And I was Same. like, I was like, whoa, because the, the Walmart in Boston, just FYI, for right. those of you that work at Walmart, the Wal- <laughs> some of the Walmarts in Boston are quite janky. Yes. But you come here and you're like, oh, man, this is a whole right? different ball game. So this I is mean, the first it, time I saw the Walmart, like the gas station. Listen, and I, and, like, and oh I tell goodness. my friends, I'm like, we got Walmarts that have sushi shops in them. Yes. And it's like, you know, you go to the Rogers <laughs> one up there on Pleasant Valley. and yeah. You're like, man, this this Walmart this is, is nice. the joint. So yeah. it's like so, yeah, I mean, and, and obviously I get it. We test market a lot of ideas Mm -hmm. here locally. And it makes sense, right? But I I read Sam Walton's biography a long time ago, and I I just had a lot of respect because for him and, you know, like they say, game recognizes game. I'm nowhere near his level, but I just, I recognize the amount of work and time and effort that he put into it. Mm -hmm. And that to this day is still the case. I mean, you can't come into Walmart half-stepping. You've got to be like, okay, I'm going to work this plan. I'm going to come in here. Mm -hmm. You guys have some ideas. I think I can act on those and bring it to the market. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. And and a lot of that, it was born out of just the just the desire that Sam Walton had to reach the widest audience possible. Absolutely. Providing value at every point. And Mm -hmm. I think that's huge. And so I always try to give them a shout out. I'm just not going to I'm not going to ever just I mean, no company's perfect. Sure, of course. Right? Of course. JB mm-hmm. Hunt, Tyson, Walmart, they all got their issues. Ooh, everybody but got every issues. company has their issues. For sure. So but I, I I'm always going to sit around and, and say, Hey, I appreciate a lot of the efforts that they're doing. Can they do more? Absolutely. But every company sure. that's printing the kind of money that they're printing can always mm-hmm. do more. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's so that's the thing. But I'm always amazed when I look up and it's like, Oh, this is being sponsored by Wal- Walmart. This yes, is being or the sponsored Walton by Foundation. The Walton Family yes. Foundation. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I'm always I'm with that and I I believe that this area is going to grow because of that mm-hmm. intentionality that they do practice in that area to grow 
this area because this is mm-hmm. not the sleepy northwest Arkansas that that Sam Walton started out in. It's a it really much isn't. Different, it's booming. I mean, listen, Bentonville mm-hmm. has changed since I moved here. Same. And it's like, I'm like I remember. I was like I should have bought some property in Bentonville back <laughs> in the day, and now I'm like God yeah. dog. It's just. You know, and and I mean, it, everything has just grown like overnight. Absolutely, so, yeah, it's crazy. But listen, I, I want to uh, before we close, I, I do want to talk with you just to kind of find out what are just to kind of give the people that are listening. We have people that are not from here that are thinking about moving here, mm-hmm. and then we have people that live here and are just trying to find out new things that they can be involved with or do. Absolutely. What, what was it for you that really, like, once you got here and, and got into the flow of things, mm-hmm. what helped you make that adjustment here in Northwest Arkansas? Besides somebody like Tanisha, who I know, right. she's an amazing person. Yes. Shout out to Tanisha. Shout out to her husband, Carl, yes. who's a good <laughs> friend of mine. I mean, they're just good people. Absolutely. And uh, But I would just be curious to know what was it for you that helped you make the transition to acclimating to this area? I would say the support from the community, like seeing people who are active in the community, seeing people that look like me Mm -hmm. who are active in the community actually inspired me to want to be active in the community. So there's always some examples of people that you want to be like or people that you see are making a difference. And I think that that propelled me to be like, you know what, like, this is something that I want to explore. And especially with Interform and with Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week, the intentionality to put a black girl on a billboard, the intentionality to put someone with different abilities on the runway is like, absolutely. Like, this is my tribe. This is my people. We have, we align in values. Right. So finding your tribe, I think, is the main thing and finding people who align with what you align with and feeling like you're not alone. Because I feel like sometimes when we feel like we're alone, we continue to isolate ourselves. But the more people reach out and say like, I hear you and I see what you're doing and I think it's great. It makes you want to keep going. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. So for those that don't know, tell us how often Interform does Fashion Week. Well, we haven't done it since the pandemic, no, yeah, but, no, but, but, but usually we do it in spring and in fall. Okay. And this year it's at the Momentary, which is a completely different venue. So we're really excited about that. But we typically do it in the spring and in the fall. Yeah, because the, the one you did in the fall was in um, Springdale. downtown. Yeah, we yeah, did it was... on in the middle of the street. Yeah. My wife um, said that was quite interesting, but she was. had fun. She enjoyed that. So, yeah. yeah so. Your wife is an amazing model, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but we were excited about that because it was safe, because it was outside, you know, with the pandemic going on. Right. Um, but also, you know, doing things outside is a little bit of a risk. It could be raining. I or... know. The weather turned out perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Surprising. Out perfect. So, so. We, yeah, we lucked out on that for sure. So the momentary is the next canvas for Interform. Yes. And I, we're so, excited. so this is kind of like probably like the biggest event that the Momentary's had since Huge. the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And it's the, our biggest event as well. And I do want people to understand that Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week is a fundraiser. It's yeah. our biggest fundraiser. I think people think that we take the money and like take it home, put it on the bed and roll around in it. Right. But like <laughs> it's to fund other programs that Interform, you know, puts on like Emerge, our designer and residency program. We have a sewn trades program for beginners who want to learn how to sew. And we have an art curation program called Assembly, which is biannually. So this money is definitely going back into the community. We're not, we're not, you know, blowing money fast and (laughs) making it rain. So, well, people need to know that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, like with the school bake sale, do you pay the people who make the cookies? You don't. You, right. you buy the cookies and then it goes to whoever. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. kind of like the same concept. I know people are like, you ask people to do it for free. And it's like, well, you know, uh, we're giving people a platform, a platform. Yeah. and visibility and we're funding our programs. So. And you've had some great designers, some great local designers, yes. folks from Little Rock and elsewhere mm-hmm. that just came up. And I saw some of the clothes. Mm-hmm. Not just that what my wife wore, but just in general, I was just like, oh man, this is some this is some powerful some stuff. Solid stuff. Like Twenty yeah. Second Element from yeah. Little Rock. He's a black designer. Yeah, right. And I mean, his clothing is amazing, and there's so much attention to detail, and like you just you're just so surprised because it's right here. Yeah, you don't have to go to New York to see clothing like that. You can see it right here. You know, it's funny. I always tell this. I don't want to 
say too much, but I, I've, <laughs> I've been working on a book for the longest time. And, and, and part of the book, part of the, pre- the premise of the book is that a lot of what we look for in life is actually right in our own backyard. Hello. Right. There's a, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a great story called Acres of Diamond. And I can't tell the story this episode of the podcast, but suffice to say, this guy goes way out of his element to go find this large, elusive diamond that he's been looking mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. You know, he ultimately ends up dying in the process. Oh, goodness. Only to th- for people later to find out that the diamond that he was looking for was actually discovered right in his own backyard. Oh, goodness. And, you know, the and it's lesson. like, yes, I mean, you so, know? but, but, and so I, I always tell people that a lot of times we, you know, we're looking elsewhere. People might say that are here that are saying, oh, I've got to get out of Northwest Arkansas. I want to go to the coast or I want to go do mm-hmm. that. Trust me, everything's coming here. Correct. And a lot of the things that you're looking at right now in Northwest Arkansas, where you're saying, oh, I want the bigger this or the better that. Trust me, it's all starting to to slowly happen here. Mm-hmm. When I talk to people, and I'm talking to African Americans that are on the, the coast that are telling me, "Yeah, we're bringing a whole crew of people to Northwest Arkansas to ride mountain wow. bikes." Wow, like, <laughs> but you know, I'm sure you wouldn't have heard that 10 or 15 years ago. And sure. and so, a lot of times, you just need to look in your own backyard mm-hmm. for the resources that you have and steward them properly. Mm. And, you know, you can take advantage of what, what's right there. That's a good point. It is. Yeah. It is. And <laughs> I, I appreciate that. And I just, and I'll, I'm going to, this is my last, I'm going to get off my soapbox after I make this last <laughs> point. It was a lesson that my grandfather taught me a long time ago. And my uncle also shared this with him. And I'm sure my uncle got it from my grandfather. Mm-hmm. I always distinctly remember him saying, Whatever you give to a city, it will give back to you. Mm. So wherever you are, because a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm just using this as a stepping stone to get someplace else. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of how it is sometimes. But I've always looked at wherever I am, I'm in there 100 percent. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I could be like, oh, well. I'm just going to buy my time when my kids get out of school. Then I'm going to go someplace. Well, life's right. too short to be doing that. It is. And, and so for me not to say, hey, I'm going to take advantage of where I am at this moment. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just a, a piece of advice for anybody listening, because a lot of times people are waiting for the perfect opportunity or the right moment. Mm-hmm. And that moment sometimes can pass you by. Absolutely. And, and if I you think, can't do with what you have, what makes you think you're going to do something different exactly, in another town? Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, I don't want to get scriptural on anybody, but I do want to just, <laughs> that might be for somebody that's listening to this. And mm-hmm. I know, listen, because I have a lot of loyal listeners and I really appreciate people that are listening to this podcast and are searching for their truth. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you don't have to look far for it. Mm-hmm. It's right in front of you. Exactly. Or right in your backyard. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it at that. So, <laughs> so, so really quickly, just give people a kind of a, an idea of, of some of the episodes that you featured on the Interform podcast. Because there mm-hmm. you did one when I first thought about it, I was like, okay, so this is a podcast about modeling and all this, but it's so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you dealt with a topic that we were just discussing, which yes. is, I think it's important. And I, I think my white brothers and sisters that are listening to this, she did, you did an episode on hair, on black yeah, hair. Yeah, it's a and tough just, one. Just the awareness of it, right? You know, yes. my kids just recently started getting braids and mm-hmm. um, not that my wife's not adding extensions to their hair. She's just braiding their hair. Right, so. right. But but I mean, the bottom line is a, a lot of times that creates some inquisitiveness Correct. among their classmates. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, I mean, just creating the awareness, you know, like I've never really gone to touch anybody's hair unless they asked me to touch it or, right. they said, you know, it's today. Hey, you touch would my think hair. it's what does this feel like? Yeah, it yeah. Would, but it's fine. It's just just kind of making that awareness. So you did an episode talking about that. I did. I spoke with uh, Montanique Davis, who is a uh, hairstylist and she's our director of hair for Interform. And just some of our experiences growing up with, you know, being in a all white setting or all white schools with some of the insecurities and challenges that we faced with people touching our hair, maybe out of entitlement, maybe out of they they didn't know. Right. And I think the episode is important just to let people know why it's not okay or why some people may not have an issue with it because some people really don't know. And I think education is part of it. And that's what we touched on in that episode is just people's personal experiences, personal space, Mm -hmm. and kind of the history behind why it's not okay to touch black people's hair because it, it is rooted in some things that, you know, are not very appropriate. Right. So I think it it was just a really important topic to touch on. And I got so many 
people so much support especially from you and your wife about the episode so i really appreciate that and i hope it helps i hope it helps some people well there's two topics in the black community that you could talk about that will create a bevy of opinions (laughs) one one is colorism oh (laughs) that's 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 a whole different ball game so that's the paper bag test yeah the brown paper bag test and then the other is hair yes and and so i mean so much so that there have been several movies on hair i mean chris rock did the movie good hair which i thought was amazing it's so amazing Um, but i mean colorism is a real thing i mean blackish dealt with an episode talking about that and and about the little jokes yeah, that we just, do just, like team yeah, light and, skin and, 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 yeah mm-hmm. and it's, it's crazy and and so so here's the challenge and i just want to share this with folks so in the black community mm-hmm. it's a struggle for us just like it would be for anybody else so sure. you know i think it's just good to recognize that, mm-hmm. that we all have our challenges how do we overcome this and how do we deal with it and i just but i also think that it's one of those things where you have to have those conversations or you and, and you have to be able to educate. I can't educate everybody, but you have to. There are safe places where you can come and learn about it mm-hmm. without being like, how come I don't know about this? Or exactly. How come I'm not aware. And so I just think that's why I want to talk about stuff like this, because I know I have a lot of people that listen to this mm-hmm. um, that don't look like me and I appreciate them. And again, my podcast, as I've always said, is for everyone. Absolutely. And I always want to walk away from listening to something with some a kernel of knowledge or truth that Mm -hmm. I can hold on to until the next time I hear it. Colorism. Uh, We'll talk about that (laughs) later. That that might have to be a different one. So that would be a really interesting one. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's yeah, because I just recently saw a picture of um, Thomas Jefferson and then next to it was a picture of Thomas Jefferson's great great grandson. Mm-hmm. And I mean, obviously, there, you know, he's he is from the Sally Hemings line. And yes. And so, I mean, it's just it's just really interesting. So for those of you that aren't aware, Thomas Jefferson has a whole line of black folks that are in his correct family, a long line. I, I went to school with some of them and I actually went to school with some that George Washington does, too, mm-hmm, um, which is mm-hmm. not as known as Thomas Jefferson's. But yeah, it's and it's, the narrative behind Sally Fleming is more of a mistress, but I don't really think that's the case because she was like 14. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's a whole different story. Yeah. No, I, I'm not going to go there. I just, I just, you know, let's just say, read your history books and, there it and is. understand. And, and actually what's good is there was a really great program on Netflix about black cooking mm, and okay. uh, which talks a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. It talks about how actually how mac and cheese came about and mm. uh, yeah. And it, it was actually developed in the, the Jefferson household there in Virginia. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's deep. And actually, the name of that show is escaping me right now. So I apologize to anyone that's listening <laughs> to this. It's like, what's the name of the show? But it's <laughs> it's on. I'll put it on the show notes. I'm okay. going to put everything on the show notes okay. so they can get it. So I'll make sure I, I put a link to the episode on the hair mm-hmm. from Interform on the show notes. And just Thank the link you. in general. Yeah, so people mm-hmm. can check it out. But I would love, as as we close out, any last thoughts that you want to give anybody that might be, you know, that might be maybe struggling here in Northwest Arkansas yeah. and, and haven't found their tribe or found, I don't care who they are, but mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but that are legitimately having a hard time adjusting to Northwest Arkansas. What would your advice be to them? My advice would be everything is temporary, including the negative experiences. So if you're consistent, then you will get out of those negative experiences and those challenges and to just be a little bit more patient with finding your tribe because you're not going to find them like overnight or in two hours. You're going to have to put yourself out there, which is kind of hard for me to do sometimes. You're going to have to put yourself out there and just meet different people. But there are people who will embrace you and support whatever dream that you have. And you can definitely do it here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Ro, I I think I I just love the the way that we've been able to go back and forth on this. And I could go, I could go on and on and on. I just got to find a natural place to close this particular episode I know. out. But I want, I want to talk to you about I'm, other I'm, stuff. I'm putting you out there. <laughs> I want to have you on again because I'd love to talk about some different things and give some more exposure. What is the date for the next NWA Fashion Week? It's March 10th, 11th, and 12th. Okay, March 10th, 11th, and 12th. Mm-hmm. Okay, so At we the will, momentary. Yeah, we will try to get this episode out before then. If you're listening to this after the fact, we want you to connect with Interform, and the Interform website is? Interform.art. Okay, mm-hmm. perfect. There you go, interform.art. <laughs> so definitely want to encourage you to check them out. 
check out the podcast. Check out Ro. Ro, Ro is at Ro underscore on the radio. Yes. Right. On Instagram. <laughs> yes. And Twitter or just Instagram? I, I'm not on Twitter. I am on Facebook, though. It's just Ro okay. Bailey on, Ro on Bailey. Facebook. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll make sure everybody has a, a number of ways to connect with you. Mm -hmm. If you've heard her on here, give her a shout out. Just let her know how much you appreciated her sharing her truth with the I Am Northwest Arkansas audience. So listen, we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I made it. Yes, you made it. You made it. You made it. So, well, folks, that's another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. To learn more about us or to read or download the show notes from today's episode, like I just talked about, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. And by the way, if you've noticed that our website is a lot faster than it has been previously, big shout out to Nick and Meredith Caston for just helping a brother out. And uh, they just, uh, I love those guys. They are tremendous. They moved here about a year ago to relocate to Northwest Arkansas. And we've become fast friends. And I really appreciate you guys. And I just wanted to give you a shout out on the podcast. But listen, you can listen to this podcast and sign up for our free newsletter to keep up with us and all things NWA. Sign up today. And for those of you that don't know, my newsletter is short and sweet and to the point. I do a video. It's real easy because some people don't want to read. Correct. So it's better to watch <laughs> a video. And so that's how I do it. And remember that you can subscribe or follow the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast wherever you listen to it. And please consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Our podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. We'll see you back here next week for another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.